All right, hello everybody. Um, if you're familiar with Andrew's uh, Elevate Tours Elevator Museum, uh, you probably remember seeing this piece, at least uh, in several different places. Uh, it's always kind of been sidelined, unfortunately. This is a vintage Otis floor indicator from Sinai Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, obviously, it's custom with its little custom um, signage, uh, which I think is pretty cool. And um, today, uh, I'm going to uh, w make a video walking through myself of wiring it up and making it sequence, building a sequencer, basically. Uh, this is going to be a pretty interesting project. I have everything I need to do it. But before I do it, I'm just going to go ahead and show you what it looks like in the before stage. You know, and then I'm going to do me doing it. And then it will show you what it looks like when I'm done. Um, so let's take it up apart. It's got these um, machine screws holding it in. And check this out. This is pretty neat. It's actually hinged. So this is it on the inside. Um, we have, let me get the camera off the tripod. We have uh, two different light sockets for these. And then we have one light socket for this right here, the actual indicator bit, and then the two for the um, little directory signs. You can tell the one on three and five have been replaced at a later time because they're white instead of red. Um. These also have a little red um, fi uh, filters in them, which I uh, they did come with. Just get this. Initial uh, without them, it would just kind of you could see the bulb behind them. Uh, I, I see that a lot in old Otis elevators because this is just a piece of plastic that I'm sure gets lost very easily. But somehow these were all in place. Well, they weren't in place; they were within somewhere in here. So I just I just took some hot glue and put them in to make sure they're not going to back out. And uh, let's see if I could do this. This is what it looks like. That wasn't supposed to happen. This is what it looks like with the um, the filter in place. It looks very nice. I think they're. I thought they're usually orange, but this in this case they're red. Um, but in here we have some old light bulbs. These are actually neon right here. They're very dim neon. Designed perfectly for an application like this. And yeah, so um, what I plan to do is I'm probably going to take all these bulbs out. Probably going to save the good bulbs. All of these incandescent, regular incandescent bulbs are dead. I believe they're made by Westinghouse. All of them are dead. So I'm just going to take them all out, throw them all away. And some of these, like this for example, is completely broken. That looks like it's a tetanus shot waiting to happen. But yeah, so let me show you what I'm going to use to build the project. Alright, so closing this up. So first and foremost, the brains of the organization is going to be this totally not Arduino, Arduino Uno board. Um, I paid, well I got this for about six dollars uh, after taxes and everything because in the lovely Commonwealth of Virginia, um, everything bought online, it gets taxed now. Um, so that's going to be the brains. I have a relay board right here that uh, is going to control the lights. This is an eight channel, but they only sell them in like five and eight. So, and I didn't. I just thought you know, might as well get a couple, one with a couple extra uh, channels just in case. You never know. And then I have some. LEDs. These are little LED, I don't know what you call them, LED boards, something like that. Um, they're very bright. They're gonna, I'm gonna put them in here, stick, probably stick them on the uh, old light sockets themselves, and then up here, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I, don't, I need to see where the, because there's a separation between here and the top and the bottom. I'm not really sure why, because the way it looks like it was wired, it looks like the directory comes on with each floor. I would have thought they would have been wired up so the directory is on at all times, but maybe it was redone at some point. I actually don't know. Um, but yeah, so I guess the first and foremost, let's get this thing cleaned out. All right, here we are in the great outdoors. Um, now, there's a lot of dust in here that I want to get rid of. Um, I would 
traditionally had a vacuum, although I didn't want to get the vacuum out. And typically I don't have compressed air, but guess what? They were running a super sale at, if that's what you want to call it, at Micro Center for $2 per can of compressed air. Now that is an amazing deal. But let's see, you just, yeah, yeah, look at that. I'm not going to use, I'm going to use it pretty sparingly because Andrew may be worth a lot, but not all my compressed air. Because this stuff is worth its weight in gold, especially with all the computers that I have. Ugh. All right, I think that's just about as good as it's going to get. Now let's clean off the front. All right, I'm back, and thanks to Super Sandy Claws, <clears throat> I mean Super Sandy Cloth, um, we're, we're pretty much clean on the front. It looks very nice. Very clean. Um, anyways, so I've already started dabbling around with how I'm going to do things. Despite how big this is, there's actually not a lot of space inside to uh, that I have at my disposal to put the circuitry. I do what I do know is I do want everything to be on the inside and not you know hot glued or something on the outside. So what I've done so far, by the way, this is how it's going to look uh, with these with the LED light. It's very bright. Um, I was very, I mean. I had a uh, light similar to this that I tried to put in my car one time. They were nowhere near as bright as this. Like, look at this. Oh, it's blinding. Oh, that's really horrible. Um, but yeah, so there's the little module right there. And so I plan to have the Arduino Uno board right there on the on the, on the bottom. And I'm going to have the uh, relay board. I'm going to have it obviously turned around. I'm going to have it right here. Obviously, I'm going to have the, uh, the bottom of these taped up so that nothing gets shorted out. That's how. That's what I plan to do, and uh, if everything goes well, it should just close right and fine. So yeah, let's uh, get started. All right. So this is what I have the Arduino program to do right now. It's just to uh, turn one relay, in this case number one, on and off every second. So just just to confirm that the relay module does work with this, and it's going to play nicely. So um, I guess uh, now it's going to time to start figuring everything out. All right, so I think I have a pretty good basis as to how I'm going to do this. I have the relay board here already uh, wired up with all the positives, and um, I am going to be running using this Ethernet cable. But I have a nicer cable, but you know, Andrew's worth a lot, but not that much. Well, it wasn't that expensive, but I had this Ethernet cable laying around that I need to use anyway, so I'm just going to use that. And um, yeah, so here's the um, the boards that I'm using. Um, what I have the what I have been doing is taking in each package you see you get a couple of different connectors because these are supposed to go in cars so they give you um, some attachments so you can get put them into your car as some sort of a retrofit replacement and let's see I've been taking this one right here Oop, there goes the other one I'm gonna have to pick that up because I have to show you why I'm not using this one so I've been clipping the ends off these just so I have an extra lead and it can be taken off in the event that it doesn't work. I initially pulled this one off, but this is really stiff wired. I don't know why these are so stiff. You can see like it just bended. So I don't really like that. So that's why I'm just using these right here. So I have the first set of connectors already uh, attached just directly to the relay board. I'm not going to be messing around with some extra wire if I don't need it. And uh, to attach each... Um, to attach each thing together, I'm going to try out these scotch locks. Or, well, these aren't actually scotch locks, but basically scotch locks. I'm going to try these and see if this will work. They only have provisions for two wires, but I think I'll be able to slide three in there and see if that works. So, yeah, um, let's go. All right, so I have the first uh, number, well, the second number done. The first one is just being attached directly to the relay board, as I said. Um, I'm going to make sure that these scotch locks are providing good contact. And uh, if... Uh, it works then we're gonna just keep going so right now I have the Arduino program to just do um, turn them all on and all off at the same time here we go looks like it's working the only thing that uh, I okay so it looks like what I did was I accidentally Oh, I see what I did. Okay, so I actually put it to normally close instead of normally open. No big deal. All right, so we should be good to keep going. All right, so this is the progress so far. Um, as you can see, I so put LEDs in all of the bottom, uh, uh, on the for the bottom lights, the actual indicator part. Um, 
I have begun putting them on the top, but I haven't finished yet. I just want to make sure everything was working and looking all nice. So I guess what I'll do temporarily is I'll just plug it in and I'll show you what it looks like. Let me put the cover over because these lights are very bright. This is my mess of wiring. It's going to look a little bit better when I'm done. So this is it so far. As I said, I only got uh, things in here at the top and I don't have anything for ground yet since that's the only leads that I have to work with for that. Alright, so uh, let me finish this up. Alright, so I have the code pretty much uh, pat down right now. I just finished debugging uh, to the level that I could, really. Um, so this is the code itself. It's, you know, it's written in Arduino, of course. Um, and usually I'm pretty gun shy about showing my code because, you know, it's mine. <laughs> but in this case, you know, it's, it's a very basic code. I can't imagine anybody... Uh, that wants to do this wouldn't be able to do it themselves without five minutes not even of research and you know just a little bit of time on their hands but really um basically all i have here is you know it goes to this little cycle where it well first off um i have it you know addressed as to what you know everything here is an output and then we have uh it, it we have everything turn on then it you know turn um it just does this little thing. I'll, I'll just show you when it comes on. Um, what's really weird is I remember I, I haven't done Arduino in a very long time, but I remember high. I, I remember high being on and low being off. I guess I'm wrong. That or this. That's just how this Arduino takes it. I actually don't know. All right, but I am basically done, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's turned on. All right, so here it is, all done. Um, for the most part, it looks pretty good. This corner over here is not that great, but that's just because there's only so much that I could do with it. I mean, I didn't have much room to play with. So, here's each LED module. These are very bright, by the way. <laughs> I'm sure I've mentioned that, but man, they are definitely bright. These have definitely done the trick. These little uh, fake scotch locks. A little difficult to get all three wires in, but I certainly got there in the end, and they, everything works just fine. Um, everything's all safe and stuff. Here's the Arduino board under here. Um, with this uh, module attached to the uh, USB port on the top, so you know it's still accessible, but you know not very easily. You kind of do a little bit of finagling to get the USB port in, but then again, you're, I'm re I don't I really don't expect to have to reprogram this. All right, so I guess let's go ahead and close this up. Oh, by the way, this can be a little bit difficult when it comes to closing up, so I got to be careful not to you know break anything because that would be a big problem. But it looks like it's done, so let's go ahead and plug it in. We'll get it on the tripod, the camera on the tripod first. You know, I'm sure all y'all would love to see it doing its thing. Well, actually, I have a better place for this. All right, so uh, here's a much better angle. Um, so I guess here we go. Let's plug it in. Now I have the uh, G and the 5 at a slightly higher time uh, other than the others because it's kind of, you know, giving the impression that it's stopping at, you know, G and 5 to reverse and, you know, the other floor is just kind of going by. But yeah, I think it actually turned out pretty good. Alright, so uh, here's a much better angle. Um, so I guess here we go, let's plug it in.
Now I have the uh, G and the 5 at a slightly higher time uh, other than the others because it's kind of, you know, giving the impression that it's stopping at, you know, G and 5 to reverse and, you know, the other floor is just kind of going by. But yeah, I think it actually turned out pretty good. And last but not least, I need to leave my mark. Alright, thank you very much for watching, and that'll be it.